Today I want to talk about the Commodore 1526 printer. Now this printer is sort of a misunderstood printer. Um, you know, there are a lot of rumors that the printer can't print graphics. It can print graphics, uh, just... Um, it can print graphics, but it's not compatible with a lot of the software that was written because it was written before the 1526 came out. Um, it doesn't support the graphics modes of the MPS-803, but people did figure out how to print graphics from it. Even Geos will print graphics on the Commodore 1526. And you can see they have this section on creating a custom character, uh, just like you would do on the Commodore 64. But the problem is that you can see they've created this little Commodore symbol. The problem is you can only print that once per line. So, you know, you would think that you could just define some custom characters and then print each character to, to do graphics, but no. Uh, but the workaround that someone had figured out was that if you printed your custom character and then did a uh, carriage return with no line feed, you could return back to a, an earlier position in the line and then move up and print the next, you could do another custom character and print it again. So you could, you could like basically one custom character at a time, you could print, um, you could print a whole line of graphics. And they actually use this in Geos to do the printer driver in Geos and it works fine. It prints and I'll show you that. But yeah, this was, this was a workaround. It was a bit of a hack to, uh, to be able to print graphics other than just this single uh, custom character on a line. So first, let's just uh, let's just print an image from Doodle. We'll just load this uh, high res image into memory. If you Google fifteen twenty six and Doodle and print, you'll, you'll find the D sixty four. I'll just load this and it it'll uh, display the image and print it. So you can see how the head bounces back and forth like that. It's because it's doing a carriage return without a line feed. It's very slowly. It still prints better than a 1525. I don't know if you've ever printed with a Commodore 1525 printer. Uh, you'll know how blurry and awful those prints look but we'll come back in a minute when this is finished and you can see the end result and then we'll move on so the 1526 printer at the time was a, it was a business printer uh, a lot of the formatting options for text were for uh, you know related to business formatting columns and uh, numbers and text justifying left and right and you know, but the print quality was actually really nice. You know, it, the descender, it had descenders, so the G's and Y's went below the line. Uh, the, the ribbon was a plastic carbon ribbon, so there's no ink. It's just uh, like a carbon powder on the ribbon, which made the print quality actually really nice. Compared to something like a 1525, it's, it's a huge difference. Uh, it printed at about 60 characters per second bi-directionally, whereas the 1525 was only printed in one direction, and then it had a spring that pulled the head back, which would usually get stuck, and you'd give it a little nudge, and it would go back and print one line again. The 1525 was a single print printer, believe it or not, uh, but this is a true 8-pin printer, not a 9-pin, like a modern printer, but 8 pins. So let's print this. I always forget you have to hold the button down. Okay. How will Geo's print to the 
Okay, so one printed with the 1526 uh, doodle print and one with Geos. Let's do a, there's a ROM upgrade we can do to the 1526 to make it compatible with the 15, or the uh, MPS 803. Uh, let's do that real quick. You can see the bottom of the 1526 has all these brass inserts. For the carriage assembly. So it's, it's made pretty well compared to some of the other printers. What's happening? There we go. Okay. Okay, so it's interesting. Usually uh this is an EPROM, but in this printer it's just a ROM. I suspect that it might be because this, I think this is an, uh, a newer version of this printer. Um, the last one I had had an EEPROM here. I'll post a picture of that. But I'm going to replace this with a 2764 EEPROM. And I'll show you where to get that. So the 1526 can support either a 24 pin or a 28 pin EEPROM. And as far as I know, they all came with a 24 pin EEPROM. And those jumpers right there on the left, J2 and J3, uh, are to set which uh, EEPROM you are using. It's in the service manual. You can just Google the 1526 service manual. It's listed in there if you need to use a 28 pin EEPROM. Uh, some of these machines don't have a ROM. They actually have an EEPROM in there and you can just remove the sticker and blanket and just burn right to that EEPROM, which I'm doing right now because my other 1526 had an EEPROM in it. So I'm just reusing that EEPROM. So just be sure when you insert the 24-pin uh, EEPROM that you leave the first two pins like that open and you move it all the way to the bottom um, or towards the front of the printer. We're looking at it from the back here. And before someone mentions it in the comments that is not electrolyte that is glue printers shake a lot so these big capacitors are glued down Doo -dee -doo. chip is blank Okay. We Well, that's not a 24 pin EEPROM. I could have sworn this was a 24 pin EEPROM. I guess I'll be changing the jumpers. Okay, so it looks like currently 
J1 and J2 should be closed, and I need to change it to J3 and J4 being closed. Let's see if that's what it shows on the board. And yes, I see a very thin wire, very thin jumper between J1 and J2. So I'll cut that, and I'll put a little jumper across J3 and J4. Installed. Two jumpers removed. Okay, so we have everything back together, and hopefully, when we turn this on, we'll see the print head initialize. Uh, if it doesn't move back and forth, you did something wrong. Okay, now we'll do a print test to make sure that it's 07C. Okay, well, let's print. Okay, so now we're in Doodle and I've loaded the same image. Can we print from here? Let's find out. Turn my printer back on. I mean, which printer does Doodle think it's printing to? 1525? Uh, will it work? And it does. Great. Not sure what these missed lines are. Let's try it again. This must have just been some sort of feeding issue. So that printed perfectly. Okay. So it thinks it's a 1525 now, or compatible with a 1525, which I imagine the MPS 803 is also.